My fellow Americans, from the early days of the colonies, prayer in school was practiced and revered as an important tradition. Indeed, for nearly 200 years of our nation's history, it was considered a natural expression of our religious freedom. But in 1962, the Supreme Court handed down a controversial decision prohibiting prayer in public schools. Sometimes I can't help but feel the First Amendment is being turned on its head. Because ask yourselves, can it really be true that the First Amendment can permit Nazis and Ku Klux Klansmen to march on public property, advocate the extermination of people of the Jewish faith and the subjugation of blacks, while the same amendment forbids our children from saying a prayer in school? When a group of students at the Gilderland High School in Albany, New York, sought to use an empty classroom for voluntary prayer meetings, the Second Circuit of, of Appeals said no. The court thought it might be dangerous because students might be coerced into praying if they saw the football captain or student body president participating in prayer meetings. Then there was the case of the kindergarten class reciting a verse before their milk and cookies. They said, we thank you for the flowers so sweet. We thank you for the food we eat. We thank you for the birds that sing. We thank you, God, for everything. But a federal court of appeals ordered them to stop. They were supposedly violating the Constitution of the United States. Teddy Roosevelt told us, the American people are slow to wrath, but when their wrath is once kindled, it burns like a consuming flame. Up to 80% of the American people support voluntary prayer. They understand what the Founding Fathers intended. The First Amendment to the Constitution was not written to protect the people from religion. That amendment was written to protect religion from government tyranny. The amendment says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. What could be more clear? The act that established our public school system called for public education to see that our children learned about religion and morality. References to God can be found in the Mayflower Compact of 1620, the Declaration of Independence, the Pledge of Allegiance, and the National Anthem. Our legal tender states, In God We Trust. When the Constitution was being debated at the Constitutional Convention, Benjamin Franklin rose to say, The longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see that God governs in the affairs of men. Without his concurring aid, we shall succeed in this political building no better than the tower or the builders of Babel. He asked, Have we now forgotten this powerful friend, or do we imagine we no longer need his assistance? Franklin then asked the convention to begin its daily deliberations by asking for the assistance of Almighty God. George Washington believed that religion was an essential pillar of a strong society. In his farewell address, he said, reason and experience both forbid us to expect that national morality can prevail in exclusion of religious principle. And when John Jay, the first Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court was asked in his dying hour if he had any farewell counsels to leave his children. Jay answered, they have the book. But now we're told our children have no right to pray in school. Nonsense. The pendulum has swung too far toward intolerance against genuine religious freedom. It's time to redress the balance. Former Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart noted, if religious exercises are held to be an impermissible activity in schools, religion is placed at an artificial and state-created disadvantage. Permission for such exercises, for those who want them, is necessary if the schools are truly to be neutral in the matter of religion. And a refusal to permit them is seen not as the realization of state neutrality, but rather as the establishment of a religion of secularism. The Senate will soon vote on a constitutional amendment to permit voluntary vocal prayer in public schools. If two-thirds of the Senate approve, then we must convince the House leadership to permit a vote on the issue. I am confident that if the Congress passes our amendment this year, then the state legislatures will do likewise and we'll be able to celebrate a great victory for our children. Our amendment would ensure that no child be forced to recite a prayer. Indeed, it explicitly states this, nor would the state be allowed to compose the words of any prayer. But the courts could not forbid our children from voluntary vocal prayer in their schools. And by reasserting their liberty of free religious expression, we will be helping our children understand the diversity of America's religious beliefs and practices. If ever there was a time for you, the good people of this country, to make your voices heard, to make the mighty power of your will the decisive force in the halls of Congress, that time is now. Until next week, thanks for listening and God bless you.